وَإِن تَعْجَبْ فَعْجَبٌ قَوْلُهُمْ أَيْذَا كُنَّا تُرَابًا أَيْنَّا لَفِي خَلْقٍ جَدِيدٍ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ الْأَغْلَالُ فِي أَعْنَاقِهِمْ وَأُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ I'm joined once again by Ustad Abdul Rahman Hassan Hafizullah who is going to be answering the questions that you guys have sent in on contextualizing takfir. This was episode 4 of the Hot Seat Podcast and we had a number of different questions both on YouTube as well as sent into our email address and we're going to go through them now inshallah. Okay, Ustad, the first question that I have for you I mentioned at the end of the episode a couple of ayat that equate ruling by other than Allah to shirk. In al hukmu illa lillah, wa la yushriku fi hukmihi ahada. And you mentioned that um, there was another hadith that you bought in response to this. And my argument was that doesn't this show that ruling by other than Allah is shirk uh, and therefore makes someone a kafir? And you mentioned a hadith about picture making. And you said this is also when you do an action, one of Allah's actions, but it doesn't make someone a kafir. The question here is that. Does that mean that any time anybody makes shirk in one of Allah's actions, you're just going to dismiss it and you're going to say this doesn't make someone a kafir because of the hadith that you mentioned? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Lahu alhamdul hasan wa thanau al-jameel wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Yaqulu al-haqa wa huwa yahdi al-sabeel wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa tabi'ina lahum bihsanin ila yawmi deen amma ba'd that's a very good question. A question that shows that the person uh, understood the uh, episode um, and really digested the information. But coming back to the ayah, وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا What we have to understand is, when I had answered that uh, ayah, the angle that I, that I was coming from is that the person who is doing hukum bighayri ma anzal Allah is not a mushrik fi hukm Allah azza wa jalla. I mean, he's not a mushrik. He's not doing shirk in the hukum of Allah azza wa jalla aslan. I was trying to deflect that. I was trying to say that ruling by other than what Allah said down, it's not shirk. It can only be shirk if the person attributes it to the deen of Allah azza wa jalla or he does it uh, from the other forms of belief. He believes that this is permissible for him and this is halal for him or he does it out of juhud or he does it out of takdeeb or he does it out of tafadil or uh, musawiyan or those forms, those six forms that I mentioned. If he does it from that, then na'am, the ayah applies. That ayah can be used for that. The second point is, if we say that وَلَا يُشْرِكُ فِي حُكْمِهِ أَحَدًا it means that the person is a mushrik and he's a disbeliever, then the person would have to accept that if a person rules between two people on one situation, in one case, he says, you're right, you're wrong, unjustly, and he rules unfairly, that he's a mushrik and he's a disbeliever. Because you took the ayah in its general form. You've accepted the ayah unrestrictedly. So this is going to come out of your statement, basically. This is what you're going to be forced to accept. I don't think any Muslim would accept that. You see, the other thing I said, which, which is that there's a consensus, there's an ijma' that I transmitted from Ibn Abdul Bar that uh, ruling by other than what Allah sent down is oppression, is dhulm. Mm-hmm. So what's, what is the understanding of this ijma' and the ayah? What it means is that the ayah is referring to the six that I said there's a consensus that is called for Akbar. And Ibn Abdul Bar is referring to anything other than those six, which there is no consensus on. And what I mean, there is no consensus on it, meaning the takfir, there's no consensus on it. Uh, so this is what I, I, I want people to internalize and understand. Naam. Okay, so even though Allah says in the ayah, Wala yushriku, so it looks like he's talking, calling it shirk. Uh, and even if we agree that it doesn't put someone uh, out of Islam, would it at least be minor shirk, or is that not even the case here? No, I said what I usually call for hukmi ahada is only shirk in the six forms that I mentioned. That's only when it's shirk. Other than that, it's a kabiratun min al kabair. Naam. 
What about the argument that this is actually going against the Tawheed of Allah and his Tawheed al hakimiyah Again, I told you, it's a major sin. It can only go against uh, you know, Allah wa Taala's uh, rights and the person becomes a kafir for doing it is when they do it. For these six, then he's doing uh, an act of disbelief. He's now munaza'atu haqqi Allah Azza wa Jal. He's trying to fight with Allah in his rights. He's a disbeliever for that. Naam. Okay, uh, next question is, isn't there a fatwa of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al-Sheikh, who is the teacher of Sheikh Min Baz, a scholar that no doubt you are well aware of and uh, you accept. And he said that anybody who changes the constitution of Allah and rules a country by man-made laws, so he's not necessarily talking about the six you're talking about, he's just talking about ruling by other than Allah, man-made laws, has committed kufr akbar and has left the fold of Islam. Do we now say that he is upon the menhaj of the khawarij? And how do we understand this considering the ijma' that you <coughs> mentioned just now? So as the person who's watching this video is going to see on the screen, inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim's fatwa, his last fatwa is this. This is his final and last fatwa that he gave, rahimahullah. Five years, I think, was between that one and the first fatwa he gave. In other words, Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim's latest fatwa, the final and last fatwa that he gave before he passed away, which was then published in his Majmu'ul Fatawa, which was published in his Majmu'ul Fatawa, is that he didn't hold that opinion. So he came back from it. That's one response. And the person can read it on the screen. Number two. Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim, ma'ajalalatihi wa makanatihi, even though he's a great noble imam, highly respected individual in my eyes. I love him so much. He's the imam of our time. He was the first mufti of Saudi Arabia. There was no mufti before him. He's the, gr- he's the direct descendant of the great imam, Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab, rahimahullah. He, came, he come, came directly from his lineage. He can't do takfir on something he doesn't have an ayah for it or a hadith for it. The takfir is a haqqullahi. It's Allah's rights and it's the rights of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't say Sheikh so-and-so made takfir of this so it's kufr. An imam cannot make takfir on an issue. However high he is and however noble he is and however great he is. That's a point we have to understand. So even if you say Sheikh Muhammad Ibrahim made takfir on this issue, my question to you is what is his evidence? Even if we don't say that he came back from the opinion, mm. he can't make takfir on something that he doesn't have no textual evidence for. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But as I said, he did, rahimahullah, come back from that opinion. Okay, something else you mentioned on the episode was that there is an ayah that says, Ala sa'a ma yahkumun. And you use this to prove that actually anybody who does an action, this is talking about the Quraysh or the time, at the time of Jahiliyyah burying their daughters alive, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, use this to prove that actually anybody who does an action is therefore making a judgment because mm. this was an action of theirs and Allah revealed this mm. ayah. The question here is that can you name one person from the Salaf who interpreted yahkumun as amal, as actions? Rather, it is claimed that the majority of the Mufassirin like Tabari and Ibn Kathir and others actually mention that this ayah is referring to their belief that Allah has daughters and not their action of burying the daughters alive. Okay, I really want something to be understood. When I had given the ayah, there was a context of why I mentioned the verse. There was a context to it. And this is as follows. Number one, I gave the kalam of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and the kalam of Ibn Hazm, who both said that your action is hukum. Okay? I gave those two. Those two imams, they said that your own actions and what you do is considered a hukum. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said it categorically and so did Ibn Hazm rahimahullah ta'ala. Okay. The Khawarij, the early generation, the Khawarij, why did they make takfir on major sins? The Khawarij, why did they make takfir on major sins? What was their reason for making takfir based on major sins? It's because they believed it was hukum bighayri ma'an zalallah. And for them, hukum bighayri ma'an zalallah, jumlatan wa tafsila, unrestrictedly was kufr akbar. And the scholars who said that was al-imam Abu Hayyan al-Andulusi, al-imam al-Ajurriyu, Abu Abdullah al-Qurtubi, Ibn Abdul Bar, four of those imams. They said that the ayah, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ The Khawarij, they took it at its apparent. Meaning they said it's Kufr Akbar. And so based on that, they made takfir on what? Every sinner. Mm-hmm. Why did they make takfir of every sinner? You need to ask yourself this question. Because the Khawarij, the early Khawarij, understood that ruling your own actions is a hukum. And so that's why they labeled 
the major sinners as kuffar. The second point that I want to mention is that the ayah, وَإِذَا بُشِرَ أَحَدٌ بِالْأُنْثَىٰ ضَلَّ وَجْهُهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ قَظِيمٌ What I wanted to extract from the verse and derive from the verse is that hukum is not only judging between two people. It's not that you judge between two people. It can be, hukum can be what you believe. Mm. Hukum can be what you do. And it can also be if you judge between two people. That's my argument. Do you see my point? Mm-hmm. And that's what I was trying to express and that was, try, that was what I was trying to prove. That to, if you say, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ so if, if you say this ayah shows kufr akbar, you would have to make takfir on belief. You would have to make takfir on an action. You would have to, be, you would have to make takfir based on judging between two people. However small and however large it is, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter the quantity of whatever the person does. So who from the Salaf understood action to be part of this? I just told you Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala. And the Salaf. I, I mean, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he's naqil al-madhab al-Salaf. He transmits the kalam of the Salaf, the statements of the Salaf. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he said in Surah Al-Ankabut, مثلا, أَمْ حَسِبَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ أَنْ يَسْبِقُونَ سَاءَ مَا يَحْكُمُونَ the statement of saying that, uh, an, a particular statement which, which they said that those people will surpass us. I'll, this is not them judging between two people. This is my point. They're not judging between people. It's statements that they're saying. It's beliefs that they have. All of that Allah is referring as to hukum. Hukum. This is my argument. That وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ The word hukum is not restricted to what you believe only. It restricts, it's also referring to what you say, what you do, what you believe. It's referring to what you uh, judge between two people. So if you take the ayah to mean kufr akbar, that means all of those form of people are kufar. Okay, the next question here is to understand the ayah, وَمَن لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ You have to go to the reason for revelation. And the reason, if you look at the reason for revelation, you will see that the Jews changed the legislation for zina from stoning to death into blackening the faces while they believe that it is not from Allah, i.e. they didn't make al-istihlal. That's a mistake from two perspectives. Number one, the Jews, they changed the rule for worldly reasons and then they attribute it to Allah Azza wa Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ ثُمَّ يَقُولُونَ هَذَا مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا فَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَوَيْلٌ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ Meaning, so in English? So what, the, what concerns it? Allah says فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ They write their book with their own hand meaning they changed, they altered it, they played with it. ثم يقولون, then they say, this is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Hmm. So they did actually attribute it to Allah. Of course they did. So that person is incorrect in saying that. Okay. And anyone who does that, as I mentioned, is one of the forms of the six that I mentioned. That is Kufr Akbar. Because I knew that the Jews did it, and they were Kufar because of that. Mm-hmm. And that's what the context of the ayah, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ came down on. Anyone who is similar to what the Jews did is a Kafir. Like in the argument and the question here is not the six. People can bring me evidences for istihlal. I will agree with you. You can bring me evidence for takdeeb. I'll agree with you. You can bring me evidence for tafdeel. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمِ يُقِنُونَ I'll agree with you because this is all evidences. Ijma' consensus for these six. The discussion and the dialogue and the niqash is other than these six. Okay, let's talk about other than those six. So you mentioned that altogether there were nine forms of ruling by other than Allah. Six of them ijma' that this makes on the kafir is kufr akbar. The other three, there's a difference of opinion. Hmm. The question out here is asking if somebody believes that all nine forms of ruling by other than Allah are kufr akbar, because he has ijtihad in the remaining three and he is of the opinion that they are also kufr akbar, then is he upon the way of the khawarij? And if not, then where do we draw the line for him to be upon the way of the khawarij? No, the person not necessarily become from the madhab al-khawarij. He will not necessarily be from the madhab al-khawarij. The reason why is because these six, of course, if he agrees with it, he's got evidences for it and there's a consensus for it. There are three that's remaining. Mm-hmm. The tashri'am and the taqneen, we've already spoken about that in the actual podcast. Those two, there are scholars who said it's kufr akbar with all 
truthfulness and من ناحية الأمانة العلمية there are some scholars who believe that it's kufr akbar and again I've proven that there are some scholars who said it's kufr akbar and there are some scholars who said it's not kufr akbar okay. now there is a khilaf amongst the scholars on the issue of التشريعام and التقنين there is difference when there happens a difference we need to be able to reconcile between who's right from who's wrong mm-hmm. the ones who said it's kufr akbar they're the ones who have to bring the proofs not the ones who said it's not kufr akbar the reason is because what the qaid ahl sunnah agreed upon is disobedience and going against allah's command the default position is that it's a major sin or it's a sin until proven that it's kufr kufr is an additional point it needs additional evidence for it so the ones who said that it's kufr they have to supply supply us and they have to provide for us evidences now their evidences when it was sift and it was looked at it didn't uh, constitute to kufr akbar and, t- and dispelling the person from this disp- uh, from the fold of al-islam it didn't rather it proved the contrary it proved the opposite okay because as i said and i keep repeating that the kufr is allah's rights and it's the messenger's rights they're the ones who can make takfir of somebody when they make takfir of someone we have to take it from them these imams have to provide us with who they got it from where did the messenger say this and those evidences they have to be what the kalam of imam shawkani that i mentioned it has to be what as clear as the sun mm-hmm. it can't have ambiguity in it so i've said taqneen and tashri'am there is difference of opinion okay. the one the other the, th- the the other one which i call the uh, where the person changes the rule of allah but it's just mujarradan he just randomly does it mm-hmm. there's no constitution written for it and there is no uh, there is no constitution written for it he doesn't have a book that he goes back to he didn't legislate from himself he didn't bring it from another country every now and then whoever comes and he feels like he's friends with them he rules by other than what Allah sent down this is not kufr akbar and I don't think majority of the people make takfir on that one is there any difference of opinion on that no 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 no, no one does that generally no one does that okay but there is difference of opinion meaning based on the khawarij yeah there's a difference from ahlul sunnah with the khawarij right 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 yeah, no. but not within ahlul sunnah no no Okay, uh, the next question is If there's ijma' that ruling by other than Allah But there is a difference of opinion when it comes becomes large On a, on a countrywide scale, for example No, 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 how, how frequently he does it Right, right, okay, fine So that's where they bring an issue of We look at the number If he does it once or twice, they say no problem But they say if he does it for so long And he keeps doing it and again and again And he's keep, he keeps doing it Then he becomes a kafir now Now is a problem, brother the reason why it's a problem is because you've made takfir based on number now. Yeah. You've not made takfir based on the mm. essence of what this thing is. You said, it's like saying if somebody drinks alcohol once, he's not a kafir. But if he drinks it so much and he becomes drunk and then he becomes ad- addicted to alcohol, he's a kafir. That's, what you're tra- that's basically what you're trying to say. Mm. No. Okay. Uh, if there's ijma' that ruling by other than Allah is a major sin, then why is there a difference of opinion in those remaining three forms? Or, or at least in the remaining two, like you mentioned, that there is a difference of opinion. I mean, they're not making istikhla, they're not doing any of those other things, yet some people still took them outside the fold of Islam, but you're trying to claim there's an ijma. Yes, so their argument re- really revolves around uh, uh, the point which is lazimul madhab. They said, why would he write the law from himself? This is their argument. Mm. Why would he write it from himself? Even the old fatwa, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, before he came back from it as well, he came back from it, by the way, as well, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin, his takfir on this issue was based on lazim. He necessitated it from the person. He, he, in other words, he wouldn't be able to write this constitution unless he believes it's his rights. Hmm. Or he wouldn't invite a constitution taken out from another country and bring it into the Muslim country and then force the people to follow it unless he believes this is permissible for it. ila ذلك, things like that, Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. Said Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And this we've dealt with it in the podcast as well. This is Lazimul Madhab. You with me? Mm-hmm. Lazimul Madhab means you necessitate something from a person's state action and then you make takfir on them based on what you necessitated, not what they affirmed. I'll give you an example. It's like saying someone drank alcohol for 40 years, brother. Can that person, and he, would, he died and he had a pint of lager in his hand. Can that person really believe alcohol is haram? Mm. No, I don't think he believes that, man. So he must be a kafir. No, no. This act is major sin. It can become kufr. 
you need to verify, was he drinking it on the basis that it was haram and he shouldn't have done it, but he was addicted to it, or was he drinking it because he believed it was permissible? This has to come from the, the mouth of the individual who's doing it. So similar to the argument that some people might say the Muslim rulers obviously want prosperity and success for their countries, yet they're ruling by other than Allah. Doesn't this clearly show that they believe that the rule other than Allah is actually better for their countries? And Again, they've made that it, tough ca- thing? it can be. He could actually believe that this law is permissible. He can. There might be a possibility he believes that. But we can't determine that just on the action alone. Okay. We need to hear him vocalize it. He has to say it to us because the act merely is a major sin. Okay, final question I have for you today, inshallah. Uh, question. Ustad seems to be using Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu's view as proof. Does he also take Ibn Abbas's view on Iblis being an a- previously being an angel too? What is really wrong with taking the zahir of the ayah, whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed, they are the kafirun? Ibn Abbas's view on the issue of the shaytan, Iblis being an angel, uh, it's a view that I remember. I looked at this a long time ago. I haven't recently l- seen it. Um, so I, I, I can't remember whether it was authentically attributed to him or not. It, it was a long time ago, to be honest. Like in I think the question is saying, couldn't he have just got it wrong by saying kufr doing a kufr? Like I'm saying to Ibn being. Abbas, got this one wrong. The one I, where he said that the angel... Ah, so why couldn't he have so got this one wrong about the ruling by other than Allah as well? Kufr doing a kufr. Okay. So I just want to say Ibn Abbas did get it wrong if it's authentically attributed to him that he what? That he, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, said that the angel, shaitan, and Iblis, uh, Iblis specifically, that he is an angel. If he said that, then he goes against the ayah, clear-cut ayah, clear-cut ayah. Allah says, uh, And Allah says, uh, So, Abdullah ibn Abbas went against a clear-cut verse. Here, when Abdullah ibn Abbas said, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَزَى اللَّهِ فَأُولَئِكُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ كُفْرٌ دُونَ كُفْرٌ And he said, it's ظُلْمٌ دُونَ ظُلْمٍ And he said, it's فِسْقٌ دُونَ فِسْقٍ What ayah did he go against? What other textual evidence has he gone against? Number two, who from the other companions differed with Ibn Abbas? Rather, Ibn Abbas, when he said this, there is no other sahabi who differed with him on this issue. Mm-hmm. No one, and then rather, his students, they took that from him. Like Abdullah ibn Abi Rabah and Sa'id ibn Jubairin and Dahak, Tawus and Dahak, and all of these, they gave the fatwa of Ibn Abbas. They pushed his opinion. Are we all, uh, so, this is it's important that it's understood correctly. And these issues are put in the right right perspective. And all this issue, I'll tell you this this issue, Hakikatan, I've read it for. I'm not exaggerating if I say like 10 years I've been looking at this issue. Not every day, of course. But I've been seeing this issue come up and I've never seen a a response or an argument that was brought my way that made me feel that maybe I hold the wrong opinion. Everything that I felt was brought to me, it doesn't really give an answer, a sufficient answer that gives contentment I think, you know what, subhanAllah, I am not related to any ruler. He's not my cousin. Mm-hmm. He doesn't pay for my bills. Um, I don't have any reason to do de- I'm not defending anyone. I, I am speaking about this issue as a mas'ala shara'iyya, as a shara'i perspective. And it's unfair that someone will, uh, you know, accuse you of something ba- because you're speaking, uh, speaking of it from a shara'i perspective. I believed this when I was young from those years that I did research, until now I believe it, okay? And if I saw the opposite opinion to be right, wallahi, I would vocalize it. I wouldn't be shy. I would not shy away from it. There's no reason for me not to say what I believe. Lakin, I see people who come up to me and they insult me and they criticize me and all because, of, because I'm speaking about a mas'ala related to the religion, now, it's like you, and I think I said this in the podcast, it's like you going and beating an alcoholic mm. and you bash him and you lash him or you do takfir on an alcoholic or you beat him, whatever you do. And then I come to you and I stop you from beating him and I bring you to the side and I say, what are you doing? 
And then you look at me and I said, beating him is not allowed. Who are you to do it? Or you make takfir on him. And I said, why are you doing takfir on him? What is the reason you're making takfir? And I argue and I say, it's not takfir what he did. It's a major sin. And then you look at me and you say, you defend the alcoholics. You speak for the alcoholics. You argue for the alcoholics. That's what you are. That's unjust. Just because I'm talking about mas'ala shara'iyah, I'm talking about shara'i issue, whether this is the ruling for it, whether it's kufr or whether it's a major sin, it doesn't mean I'm defending a particular leader or I'm speaking for a particular government. Wallahi, I'm not. I want khair for the Muslims wherever they are. Hukam or mahkumin. Whether they're the ones who are in control and running the country or the ones who are being run. I want prosperity and good for Muslims wherever they are. Mashariq al-ardi wa magharibiha, the east and the west. That's the truth. I have no connection with any country or any system or any government. No government pays my pays me money and gives me money. Or gives me uh, you know money to defend their country or speak for their country. I'm a miskeen, simple person who's trying to survive in this world. Nah. Ustad Jazakallah Khan for your answers today. So we have time for just before we wrap up this Q&A session I do want to remind the people who are watching that if they do have any questions that they want to ask on any of the topics we cover on the show then feel free to email us at questions at the hotseatpodcast.com Subhanakal wa bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha la ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk